guys, welcome to day two of week seven of Physics in Quarantine. You guys have done such a phenomenal job. We are at the finish line. We can see it. It's right there. Uh, you just have this week and the next week of school, and then you guys are out for the summer. I just want to say, if I haven't said already, y'all have been absolutely phenomenal through this whole thing. Y'all have asked such good questions. You've had such great attitudes, and I can't thank you enough for that. So thank you for being amazing students and making my job a dream job, but also making my job um, way easier than uh, you could make it because you could make it super, super hard for me. But um, because you guys just come with such good questions and you haven't been complaining or anything like that, so I really appreciate it. Um, so let me kind of tell you what this week is going to look like and uh, really what the rest of your school year is going to look like in physics. So um, day one, I had you guys watch a introduction video to Momentum um, on Khan Academy. I thought it was a really good kind of just starter of the idea of Momentum. Uh, today is day two, so we'll be doing a lecture video, so make sure that you're taking good notes. Day three, uh, you do have a physics lab that I want you to watch. It's actually kind of funny what it is. It's um, watching some defensive linemen run their 40-yard dash. And the reason why I'm having you watch that will all make sense, hopefully, by the end of this. Um, but make sure that you're taking good notes on that lab, and I'll get to that at the end of the lecture today. And then day four... I have you guys watching a uh, Imagineer Lab, so those projects and that homework that you've been working on. I'm putting together a slideshow. Um, today is Sunday, so I can't do it until tomorrow when everybody's turned in their work when it was due. Um, but I will post that, and uh, it's an Imagineering Lab, so that way you can watch and see what everybody else has created as far as their uh, theme parks. And then on day five of week seven, you have a quiz. So that's going to be Friday, May the 8th at 11 a.m. You have a quiz with me. And that's going to be via Zoom. It's not going to take long. It'll probably be um, 15 to 20 questions. I'm not exactly sure yet. Uh, and then you have a test, just to put a birdie in your ear, that's going to be Friday, May the 15th, so your last day of school at 11 a.m., and that also will be a Zoom call. So next week you'll have um, a couple more lecture videos, although I'm going to try to be as light as I can because I know that everybody has a bunch to do. So uh, I want you all to be able to finish strong and um, not overload your plate. So if at any point uh, you have any questions for me, please let me know, and as always, I will be more than happy to answer them. Just so y'all know, um, this is my parents' house that I am at. They are watching Ireland, so that way I can get some uh, work done without being interrupted. That is so funny that as soon as I said interruptions, Pepper starts barking. That's my parents' dog, Pepper. She's a Britney Spaniel, and she's much louder than my dog, Luna. So, uh, anyways, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, and probably the best way to contact me is uh, my number, 843-834-3333. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're starting a brand new chapter on momentum. You hear the word momentum a bunch. So I've included the Webster Dictionary uh, definition of momentum, and it's strength or force gained by motion or by a series of events. So momentum has a definition when it comes to physics, but it also has a definition when it comes to everyday life. So a lot of times we say that a sports team or political candidates have a lot of momentum, and that usually means that they have like a lot of oomph to them. Um, so usually when something has a lot of momentum, they have a lot of motivation, or they have a, a lot of supporters, or they have, um, they've you know, after you've scored a goal, you get a lot of momentum for your team, so you get um, really jacked up on like, yeah, we just scored, let's keep it going, let's keep the momentum going. So all of those are ways that you use the word momentum. And in physics, uh, we also use it as a measurement of mass in motion. So more specifically, it's how much mass is in how much motion. Okay, so what I mean by that is how much mass of an object is in a certain amount or is going a certain speed or velocity. So I have a picture of Brian's Mustang and a picture of my van. Obviously, these are not the actual pictures. They're from the internet. But, uh, so Brian's van weighs about... Aww. This momentum? Yeah. This is called... This is called personal momentum. It's when you do kindness for another person, you create a force that changes a potential relationship into a kinetic relationship. And there it has momentum. Sir Isaac Newton. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Wait. Let me get a vase. Let me get a vase. I'll put okay. it in there. Okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For those of y'all who don't know, that was my dad, and uh, he's a pastor, and he's also one of the smartest people I know, so he likes to relate everything science to the Word of God, which is why I love science and the Word of God. So there you go. We have uh, Brian's Mustang, and then we have my van right here. So Brian's Mustang weighs about 3,500 pounds, where my van, or as I like to call it, Swagmobile, weighs about 4,500 pounds. So there's a 1,000-pound difference. Um, 
so if these two vehicles were going the exact same speed, so let's say they're going 60 miles per hour, and they were to crash into an object or hit an object going the exact same speed, which one would do more damage? Okay, well, right off the bat, we would know that my van is going to do more damage to an object, even though it's going to the, as the same speed as the Mustang. Why would it cause more damage? It's going to cause more damage because it has a larger mass. It weighs a thousand pounds more than Brian's Mustang. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how much mass we have and how much velocity we have of an object, and that's going to determine its momentum. If we use an opposite example of this, say something that has the same mass but a different velocity. So for example, if I have a baseball and so does a MLB pitcher, and we both throw the same baseball that has the same mass, obviously his is going to have much more momentum because it has much greater velocity than what I would throw. We use the symbol P in order to illustrate momentum. All right, let's go ahead and continue. So we use P to illustrate momentum. We And the reason why we use P is because M is already taken. So P is equal to m times v. So our momentum is going to equal mass times our velocity. So I have a picture of J.J. Watt. Uh, he's a defensive end for the Texans. And he weighs 289 pounds. And he's able to run the 40-yard dash in 4.84 seconds. And you might be thinking, why would you include this? This doesn't, like, why? Well, one, football's great, especially just all around. But football is also really good when it comes to physics um, because you want your uh, defensive linemen to have good momentum. You want them to have large momentum. That's why if you have a defensive end that is very heavy but can also run fairly quickly, um, you're going to get more momentum out of your defensive end, which is exactly what you want. So a lot of times, uh, players that play the defensive line, if they have a larger mass and they don't have much of as much velocity, um, they don't make as big of an impact. But somebody like J.J. Watt, who runs the 40-yard dash in a pretty good time and is also uh, has a very good mass, he's going to be able to plow right through people, which is what you want to do in football, right? All right, so our momentum unit of measurement is a vector. So it's a vector quantity, okay? And remember, scalar means that direction does not matter. Vector means that direction does matter. So I'm going to flip back really quick to the previous slide. If you notice, over P and over V, we have arrows. That denotes that it is a vector. Those two things are a vector quantity. Mass isn't a vector quantity because mass is mass. We don't care about its direction. But momentum and velocity, we care about its direction. Um, so that's what those arrows denote. That means that we care about the direction, and so it's a vector quantity. So... That means that when we're talking about momentum, it actually can be a negative qu quality, right? Uh, excuse me, quantity, because direction does matter. If we look at our unit of measurement, it's going to be kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so we get our kilograms from our mass, and we get our meters per second from our velocity quantity. So one thing to note, uh, and we'll get to an example in a second, is you need to be familiar with the fact that one pound, I just saw a big old fish jump in the marsh down there. One pound equals 0.45 kilograms. It's important to remember that because if I ask you a question about like a defensive end and how much they weigh, we're Americans, so we like to use poundages when it comes to describing people's weight. So you would have to be able to convert how much somebody weighs pounds-wise to kilograms in order to figure out this problem. So momentum is a really easy equation when we're talking about basic momentum. So Momentum is mass times our velocity. So what is the momentum of an object with a mass of 45 kilograms and a velocity of 30 meters per second? Our momentum is going to be 1,350, and our unit of measurement is going to be kilograms times mass per second. The second one is a little bit trickier uh, because there's some conversions that we have to do. So I want you guys to practice doing this one, and I'll give you some tips before you get started. But I want you to try to solve this one, and the answer is actually going to be found under the Day 3 lab video. So underneath the 40-yard dash, uh, you're going to see the answer. So make sure that you watch, watch the 40-yard dash, um, and just make note of... Uh, the times and the weight of the players. You might have to look up the weights of the players. Sometimes it has it listed, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but just, you know, just for your interest, it's only a 15-minute video, just watch it and see how quickly these, or how slowly, these defensive linemen can actually run and how much they weigh. All right, so I want you all to figure out the momentum of J.J. Watt if he were to run 4.84 seconds, 40 yards in 4.84 seconds, which is what he runs, but he's not going to run that every game. But let's just say that in this scenario, he has run 40 yards in 4.84 seconds, and he weighs 289 pounds. Figure out his momentum. So remember, momentum equals mass times your velocity. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to convert everything you need to. 
first thing you're going to want to do is convert pounds to kilograms. Remember, we just talked about that. So convert 289 pounds to kilograms. The second thing you want to do is to convert 40 yards to meters because you want it to be meters per second. So right now, he runs 40 yards per 4.84 seconds. I want that top number to be in meters. So that way, it's however many meters um, per 4.84 seconds. And then you will divide your meters, divide it by your seconds, and have meters per second. If you guys have any questions about that problem, please let me know. Make sure that you check that your answer is correct. If you didn't get it correct and you can't figure out where you went wrong, please, please ask me. Do not wait until the day before the quiz to ask me because you will have a question like this or two or three like this on your quiz. So be sure that you know how to convert, um, that you have uh, one pound equals 0.45 kilograms memorized, um, and also be able to figure out yards to meters, all of that good stuff. I will only make you go from pounds to kilograms and from yards to meters and potentially minutes to seconds, but I'm not going to throw some random unit conversion at you, okay? So just be sure that you're familiar. These are really simple, but if you have any questions about them, please let me know. And don't forget that your quiz is on Friday, May 8th at 11 a.m. via Zoom. You can see the link underneath this video. And uh, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions.